the Battle of Xingyang, took place during the anti Dong Zhuo alliance after Dong had relocated the populace of Luoyang to Chang'an as he thought it was easier to defend. Dong Zhuo's forces were still strong whilst he retreated to Chang'an, which dissuaded many regional warlords from engaging him. Tao Tao, on the other hand, saw it as the perfect opportunity to attack, so he announced to the Dormant Alliance, We rally troops of righteousness to destroy oppression and disorder. Now that we're united, why do you hesitate? At the beginning, if Dong Zhuo heard that the armies had risen against him in Shandong, he would have relied on the Imperial House, occupied the old capital, and turned east to attack the rest of the empire. Then, even though he behaved immorally, he would still be a threat. Now he's burning the palace, holding the Son of Heaven hostage and moving him away. The empire is in disorder and nobody knows where to turn. This is the time when he is condemned by heaven. One battle and the empire will be settled. We must not lose this opportunity. The regional warlords occupied different areas. Yuan Shao was at Heinei. Yuan Shu was at Nanyang. Kong Zhu stationed at Yingchuan. Whilst Zhang Miao, Xiao Mao and Yuan Yi were at Suan Zeo. The only allies Tao was able to add to his 3,000 troops was an officer who served under Zhang Miao called Wei Zi, the acting general who destroys barbarians Bao Zin, and his brother Bao Dao. With no real support, and with Tao's unit consisting mostly of family retainers and looters, a detachment marched west from Suan Zeo with the intention to occupy Cheng Geo. They met an army led by Zhu Rong at the Bian River in Xingyang, which was an important staging post en route to Luoyang. It was a day of fierce fighting, but ultimately Tao's ragtag assembly of soldiers proved no match for the professional frontiersmen of Dong Zhuo's. Bao Xin and Tao Tao fought together at a battle at Bian River and scored a victory, however Bao Dao was killed in action and Bao Xin himself was wounded. As Tao was unable to immediately seize Chen Gao, it led to a tactical victory for Dong Zhuo's forces. As the fighting continued, Wei Zi was killed in action and eventually the coalition forces were heavily defeated. Tao was struck by an arrow in the fray and lost his horse which is where Tao Hong came to his rescue. Zhu Rong did consider to pursue Tao's retreating forces to Suan Zeo, but he had observed that even though Tao's men were few in number, they fought fiercely throughout the day. Thus he assumed that an attack against these sorts of men would be too difficult, and so he too withdrew his army. When Tao returned to Suan Zeo, he saw the other warlords feasting every day, with no intentions of attacking. Whilst he was here, he expressed his deep disapproval of their actions. Learning from his mistake of the earlier frontal assault, he came up with an alternate strategy and proposed it to the other regional lords. The plan involved taking strategic points one by one as the coalition forces slowly surround and blockade Luo Yang and Chen Gao. After this, Yuan Shu could then, instead of attacking Luo Yang, threaten the new capital at Chang'an. At this point, the rest of the coalition would position themselves behind fortifications and avoid actual fighting. Tao argued that this arrangement would show the rest of the world that the coalition is on the move whilst at the same time applying pressure onto Dong Zhuo's court officials. The idea was to pester Dong Zhuo's court so much that it would lose credit and collapse. He said to the warlords, Now that our men are fighting for a just cause, if we hesitate and delay, we will disappoint everyone in the empire, and I will be ashamed for you. Unfortunately, the other generals at Swanzeo would not agree to this plan. At this point, Tao left with Zia Hadun to gather troops in Yang province. Once he had replenished his troops, he went to camp with the coalition's commander, Yuan Shao. After Tao had left Suanzeo, the other generals there soon ran out of food. Some even fought amongst themselves, and they all dispersed in the end. Years later, when Tao and Yuan rivaled over control for northern and central China, one of Yuan's secretaries named Chen Lin used Tao's defeat here to try and discredit him. He displayed foolhardiness and a lack of forethought. Attacking in haste, he was swiftly driven back suffering many casualties and fleeing to base with heavy loss of life. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.